Hello, my fellow geeks. I'm Mark, and today on Elite Geek, I'm going to replace the FEP here on my brand new Voxel Lab Proxima because I am an idiot. I did a print overnight. It turned out really well. I forgot to take it off, and I started a new print. I've done an exposure test just to make sure that everything is still good, and it looks like my screen is fine. I have a piece of paper on here to make sure uh, we don't need that much UV light, but that looks fine. I will be re-leveling my bed. I'll probably record another video for that because my leveling got all screwed up. So I have already cleaned this. I washed it all out with isopropyl alcohol and got the extra resin out. I just used paper towels for this. You may have seen my uh, vi review about the microfiber claws that I like. In this case, I'm replacing the FEP, so it really doesn't matter. There was no reason to waste those. Just use paper towels. You can see the damage there. It's pretty it's it might actually be usable but i don't want to risk it i can feel it on the bottom so i've decided yeah i can feel it pretty strongly here on the bottom so i've decided it's time to replace this this does come with the wrenches you need to change this but i actually have better tools so we're going to take this pip out i've not seen what's under here so this is a first time i'm changing this before i'll post this i'll make sure it works so you know you're getting a good indicator here so to remove first is with a two and a half millimeter wrench these are in here pretty good. Order taking this out really doesn't matter that much at all. All right, you'll see I do have gloves on even though I've cleaned this. You can see a little bit of residue around the edges. So I wanna make sure I don't get that on. So now we'll see what is underneath here. Oh good, it is pretty much exactly the same as all the others that I have done. This is a metal frame. It's really nice for as cheap as this printer is. It's Pretty amazing, all the nice components that this comes with. So we'll set this off to the side. It does lay flat, that's good. So the inside uses two millimeter screws. So I'm gonna go back to my tools that I've been using because while these are both two millimeter, the grip on this is just much better. So here's my old fashioned tool. And again, we're just gonna take all of these out. I had to readjust the camera to get to my bottle cap. So actually, before I do this, I'm gonna check and see how loose this is. So to see if my same Gatorade cap is gonna work. And that feels like it's gonna be just about right when I put that in. This is a typical Gatorade cap that I, uh, I got off a bottle of Gatorade. If you don't have Gatorade or don't want to go buy Gatorade just for this, there's actually a link I'll link down below for Thingiverse where you can print caps that are right at this size to use for replacing it. So uh, someone's generously made those for us. You can just print one. Hopefully you have printed one before you've gotten to this point. Now back to removing it all. Okay, so now take this apart. Take the old FEP out. So this was obviously pre cut which is kind of nice but uh, i don't have pre-cut ones they're probably available from voxel lab i'll check and link down below so what i'm going to do is i'll link these below if you can just buy them and that would be nice you can just put it in and be good to go i have two other options though this is just a generic fep that i bought off amazon they're also available on aliexpress i will link these down below i've had great success with these and i'll show you how to put these in because they are a little different than the voxel lab that's our pre-cut there's also a new type that's available now that i will link down below called infep so it's non-fep and it's supposed to be a lot better it's supposed to be a lot slicker I have some of that on the way to test, so I'll keep an FAQ down below on results of that. But if you want to try that also, it's only a little bit more than this traditional FEP now. So those are your options. You'll have three options, I think. So now we just put the bottle cap right in the middle. Do remember to check and see if you have protection on your FEP. And if you do, take it off. Do not install it with that on there. It will be a disaster. Okay, so I do my best to get it as square as possible on the center there. That's pretty good. Square this up with the camera. Then I make sure I install this right back on top. Now I will apply pressure here to it before I screw anything down. So what you can see, you can see right there, there's a, ni there's a nice curve to it. I want to work it out so, so that's nice and smooth. And I can see that 
all the way around. I can't reach it with the uh, camera, but it's all, all there, trust me. Now, what I recommend is get everything all lined up. There we go, there we go. And we're in good shape there. And then I go from the center out. Some people will go from the corners and alternate around. That's what you would do if you're attaching a wheel to a car, because you need to get everything symmetrical. I think this is more like putting a canvas on a painting frame because we have a square frame here and we're stretching it and we want it to be as even and look as good as possible. And if I start in the corners, I'm gonna end up with bulges in places. So I'm gonna start in the middle or at least as close as I can get to the middle in this case. I'll start right here. I have an X-Acto knife with a very, very sharp edge and I will puncture that part. And I'm gonna go one screw at a time. And I'm not going to puncture them all ahead of time. I'm going to go one at a time. And I'm going to do now the one right underneath this. You could probably take your gloves off at this point, but I tend to wear them. Now these, I do tighten down tight as I go. I don't leave gaps and go back around them. I will go back around them in the end, but I don't do that leave space intentionally. We'll talk more about that later when we put this back in the frame. So now I go back over here on the top. I'll do this one in the middle. Okay, so now I have those sides and now I'm gonna go and do the sides here. I'm gonna pull this out just a little bit just to make sure on this edge it's tight. And I'm gonna go ahead and do, because these are right here. I'm not gonna move it. I want this, these two screws to be very symmetrical so it will pull it evenly on the side here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Okay, now we go back around Apply just a little pressure to the corner there to pull that tight and push down here. I'll do this bottom one. Now these two over here are pretty much symmetrical from this edge here, which is good. So I'm gonna do this one first. I don't think between those two it matters a lot. Actually looking at it, this one is closer than that one. So I would do, I did that backwards of what I would recommend. I'll do it different on the others. If you notice in a uh, hundred times speed or whatever I have it set to. Now, as I put this very last one in, I'm gonna point something out here. This will be obvious once you do a couple of these, but the first time you might not know. See, these are beveled. See, that one's beveled and this one is not. So this one is beveled and that's the one you put the screws in. I mean, it, it should be obvious, but you just know, never know. And these others aren't beveled because they're beveled on the other side. Those are the ones that we will use to screw into the vat here in just a minute. Okay, that was the very last one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the cap out, and I'm going to go around. Now is when I will go around, and just to make sure they're all tight. So I will go in a crisscross pattern here to make sure they're all in well. Now I'm not, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they are. So like I said earlier, these, these, are, these are the ones to use. These are nice because you get a really good feel for it. They have a really nice texture on them. Sorry, Joe. Okay, now it's all installed. You can see, see how nice and clean that is and how we have a nice curve to it. There's no wrinkles there. That's exactly what we're looking for because now we get to put it in here. We flip it over. So here's, see those holes, which are on the one side are beveled on the other. Now we put this in the frame here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go 
from the inside, except I am going to go in a cross pattern of our bigger screw. So I'm back to the two and a half millimeter wrench. I am going to use this one because I, sorry, I like it better. Punch that through. And I am just going to apply enough pressure to catch the screw. I don't want to pull this down tight at all yet. I want to connect this one right underneath and then push it through. Now I will do this side because I want the center to be done first. There we go. Now the center is in and these part, I'm not going to end up with any wrinkles in the middle. Okay, so now they are all started. Now this one is not in. I'm gonna just, now I'm gonna go around and just like finger tight it. So I can feel some of them are higher. I want them all to be about the same level before I start. That one's way higher, I can tell. That way I'm uh, starting from the same area. I'm just applying fingertip pressure to these as we go. There, now we're pretty even, and it looks like we're pretty even in the frame. Now what I'll do is I'll do, let's see, I'm gonna get a feel for it here. I'm gonna get it level with the top, as I've mentioned, this is the first time I'm doing this vat. Yeah, I think that's gonna be fine. I'm gonna pull it, so I've got my finger here, I can feel it, I'm gonna get it l the frame level with the uh, outside frame with, of the vat. Okay, so now I'm pretty well level all the way around. So I'm curious now, so one downside I'm seeing to this vat is it doesn't stay on its own very well with because of the uh, shape here. I can't just set it down and leave it. I'm gonna have to hold it while I do this test. So that's good because I don't want to stop at this point. We want to get up to about 333 is kind of my ideal where I end up stopping. If you've seen any of my other videos, especially on the Solvol, there I was very specific about the tension that I used for it. Oh, wrong screwdriver. And how many turns we were in. Here though, one advantage I think we're gonna have to this, and I'm just gonna try it here. I'm just going to turn these several turns, and I'm just gonna tighten this down, because this doesn't go down nearly as far as some of the other vats, which I think is going to be a huge advantage, making this a whole lot easier to set up. So I'm going to just go around a couple of times and tighten it until it's all the way tight, because if we can just do that, that'll make life a whole lot easier. So it was about one turn around on each one of them, and I got it just down a little bit lower. I don't want to torque one side all the way down, but there now, that is tight. Oh, I like that. So now I kind of went around each side. Now, on a second turn around, I can get them tight. I don't want to get them totally, totally tight. I'll go around and do that after, once they're even. Okay, now I'll do one last torque down. There. All right, so now let's check the spectrum one more time. Three fourteen, perfect. I'll take that. Now we're almost done. Don't stop here. Don't get too excited. Now I take this same super sharp exacto knife, and I very carefully go around the outside edge here. I have found this to be the best way to do it. Just make sure you don't slip and cut yourself or your brand new FIP. Okay, so that looks good. Now there's one more step. I'm actually gonna flip this over because I saw that I got some uh, dirt on it. Now I am going to lube my FIP. I do this, I have a whole video just on this one step. I'll show you real fast. I like 
to lube the FEP. I think it just does a better job. So I will just put a little on here. I'm just going to smear it around on the FEP, making sure I get it all contacted. This I will definitely, definitely, definitely use these microfiber towels for. Now I will just let this sit for a couple minutes and then come back. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes. Now I'll take another quarter sheet, not the same one that I just used to apply it. And I reuse these quite a bit. Uh, there's no need to get a new microfiber towel as long as you take care of them each time. But now I'll just go through, make sure it looks clean and dry. There we go. All right, that's it. So what I'm gonna do next is test a print with this. If it works, I will post this video. If it doesn't, I'll go back to the drawing board and uh, record it again and see what I did wrong. But if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below. The full Voxel Lab Proxima video is coming soon, along with a video on how to level the build plate. Here's one quick spoiler. I, uh, I printed this guy on it and, uh, and I'm very, very happy with it. If you saved enough time or money because of this video that you wanna help support the channel, there are several options down in the description. And until next time, remember, when you go to print something new, make sure the build plate is clear.